really quickly, because <laughs> you've been yammering, um, the late method. Um, planning out a date, <coughs> right? Now, a date should have a bunch of different, separate little things that you can go and do. This is twofold, right? This is like, hey, why don't we meet for lunch? So that way, you meet for lunch. Maybe you like her. Maybe things are going really well. Then, you can have another plan. We call these mini dates. Oh, well, if we had such a great time going to, the, you know, going to lunch, I know this mini golf place that's right up the street. I like to take girls to museums. There's this really cool museum up in Los Angeles called the Getty, where I'll go and buy lunch, and we'll bring it up to the museum and eat. And if the museum goes well, then I can say, hey, well, let's take this drive down to PCH. Pacific Coast Highway goes right along, like, down to Malibu. It's like the most beautiful thing ever. I say, oh, why don't we go do that? If that went well, then I say, hey, let's stop for coffee. If that coffee went well, then I'm going to say, hey, let's go rent a movie. But if it doesn't go well, if I take this girl to lunch and she's like, duh, and I was like, oh, breaking my heart, you know, or if just things, are, if things aren't going, you know, the way I, I wanted them to go, then I can duck out. So we have a bunch of separate mini, mini, mini dates, excuse me. Um, for each of these mini dates, you want to ask yourself L-A-T-E. Number one, the logistics of everything, okay? Where is it? How much does it cost? Do you need to buy tickets? How do I get there? How much does it cost to get there? Um, what kind of, ooh, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm speaking at an actual place here. <clears throat> I'm going to use my list. The A stands for activity, okay? What are you doing there? What is the point? Not just like, well, it's mini golf, so we're mini golfing. Are you trying to have fun? Are you trying to um, stimulate her mind? Are you, do you know she, I took, I take girls on the worst dates ever. Like on paper, they're the worst dates thing. I, I took a girl to a Wagner opera. Because I knew four hours, there are two intermissions, right? Our first date was sitting quietly next to each other for four hours. Um, but I knew she loved the opera. I knew she loved fun experiences. I knew she liked German singing. She spoke German. She's from Belarus. Um, so I was like, hey, listen, I know this is probably going to be a bad date, but let's go. You know, worst comes to worst, I check out a Wagner opera. I'm not sitting by myself like a loser. And afterwards, she was like, that was great. Let's go get some food. Boom, mini date. The activity was stimulating her emotionally, musically, artistically. When I go for food or when I go for coffee, intellectual stimulation, um, communication, learning about each other, connection is super, super, super important. Right? A lot of people have had, um, this is so funny, the first girl I ever really, really connected with that I felt really got me, that I really understood, I met her online. Like literally, like I'm a dating coach. And like the first girl I like fell in love with, I was like, I was like Blue Dragon 999. I was like, <laughs> slowly taking off your blouse. <laughs> raising my scepter, right? Like, um, talking about logistics, the T in late is, is transition. How are you gonna do it? When are you gonna do it? And by what means are you gonna do it? So if I'm going from a museum to a coffee place, do I have a car? Do I know how to get there? Do I have enough money for a cab? How long does it take? Because if it takes 25 minutes in traffic, you're screwed. She's going to be bored, right? And that takes away the whole fun of it. Um, an escalation, what kind of escalation is going to go on? Not only sexual escalation, because it's important, but like, you know, a lot of guys don't understand that women are just as sexual as men because a lot of guys do it wrong. <laughs> a lot of guys are like, but you have to be because, you know, like, and, and it just goes awry. How are you going to escalate romantically? How are you going to build that connection and move forward? How are you going to make what you're doing next more fun and intriguing uh, and emotional and interesting than what you were just doing? You know, what are you going to do next that's going to that's gonna improve that quality of that? Um, when you have all of these things planned out, or before you plan all of these things out, ask yourself one thing. What has no guy done for her? What has no guy taken her on? You know, dinner, cool, pizza place, cool. There's probably like a fancy, is there like a fancy restaurant like in campus that like guys take girls? Like there's probably one fancy restaurant nearby if you're like giggling. <laughs> there's like one, there's like one restaurant and guys would be like, oh, I'll take you there. Go to a zoo. 
go somewhere else. All the girls are laughing, all the guys are like, nope, there isn't one. I don't know. But, um, go somewhere different. Think about different things, fun things. Is there a zoo? Is there a museum? Is there an exhibition? Is there like a weird talk about dating in Asian America? Like whatever, you know? And lay all these different things out, connect the dots, and then go in with the intention just to have fun. Because when you can put all those things together, I guarantee you, even if you don't meet that person of your dreams, even if you don't build that romantic connection, it's still going to be fun anyway. That's the end of my list. <laughs> So hopefully we've given you some <clears throat> thought-provoking material to go over from the uh, global issues, so to speak, that affect us uh, on society and race to what you can actually do, hopefully, this Valentine's to either get a girl or sweep the one that you have currently off her feet. Uh, so this is going to be our, our Q&A session, general discussion. Anybody have any questions? Anybody want to say something? Disagree, agree? You're all fried, we're done, we can go home, we're all full now. Yes? How did you get into the business? How did I get into the business? I, <clears throat> it's a long story, it's like this, you know. Uh, I used to be an aerospace engineer, obviously, as I said, and I discovered I sucked at dating when I moved out to California. Um, I had a college girlfriend. She was, she selected me, right? It was in my college dorm. I tell this story all the time. It's like in videos, but I'll just tell it for you. Um, and she was like a five foot nine, like tall, blonde, blue eyed. And I was a virgin up to that point. I never kissed a girl, all right? Uh, never slept with a girl until the age of 20. And she was like friends of friends. And all of us were watching a movie in my dorm room. And then like one by one, all my friends leave and it's like midnight, she's still there. I'm like, okay, you know, she's just gonna stay here to see the end of the movie. By like two o'clock, I'm like, oh my God, someone's gonna touch my penis. <laughs> right? So for the longest time in college, I thought I was the big man in campus, right? Like, hey, I've got this girlfriend, it's like engineering, there's like 10 guys for every one girl. And then I moved out to California, I tried everything. You know, speed dating, um, going to like mixtures, and realized I'm in an engineering culture, which meant like there were no women. This was before the book came out, though. And I went to his program, and it blew my mind that there was a way to affect my dating destiny, that I could have some sort of control because it felt like everything was random. I did not have any say over whether a girl liked me or didn't like me. And so I started this Asian American dating blog. And I think, you know, I don't know if there's an actual record, but I think I was probably the first Asian American dating blogger. It's back in like 2004, 2005. And the thing was, I was putting my face out there too. There was pictures of me. I mean, I wasn't, I, I'm, I wasn't like the anonymous Asian. I was out there, I was detailing my, my successes, but also my failures. And there were a lot of dating failures. But the thing was, I was unabashed at putting myself out there. And then like one day I get a call from this Chinese Canadian mother. Okay, she calls me from Toronto. She asks, can you help out my son? I was like, what? <laughs> what? What's, what's going on here? It says, my son, throughout high school, had been harassed by neo-Nazis in high school. He's never asked a girl out, he's never been on a date. I will fly you out to Toronto set you up in a hotel. I'm thinking, wow, this is awesome. Then she's like, and I'll pay you. I'm like, score, right? I was like, I am going to be his big brother that he never had. For three days and three nights, I'm going to be the big brother he never had. And I was up in Toronto about six months ago, and he's graduated from college now, and he's living with this beautiful girl that he met at college, right? During the actual program, he got his first number, asked the, you know, asked his first girl out on a date, right? but that's how I got started. This was never a job. This is never something I planned on. Never planned on starting this company. It was just one of those things where, again, not to sound all grandiose, but there's a lot of forces at play that you know I 
simply happened to be at that point where I was the only Asian American dating like effective blogger and people started coming to me for help. Okay. And it's a long story. That's why well, I try to avoid the origin story because I get asked all the time. Um, anybody else? Yes. Do you think uh, sleeping with a girl too fast can create some fire from worse and you might not see her again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, we had a student, and he was like from Malaysia. The brightest guy, like this guy is only making like um, six figures and he's only a sophomore in college. He does like online, online businesses, right? And he was like thinking of just quitting because you know, he's already making a lot of money, but he's gonna stick to it. But the thing is, he had came from Malaysia and he never ever, literally ever talked to a white girl ever in his entire life until my program, right? And so he starts getting, you know, talking to girls and he's very driven, he's very smart. And he meets, because he's like under 21, <laughs> he, go, he goes to like this, you know, gay club and he ends up actually picking up a girl there, all right? He ends up sleeping with her. And he like writes me, he's like, hey JT, I really like her, she's really cool, I want to ask her out. I'm like, okay, well you kind of already really slept with her, but you know, let's, let's see what you can do about this. And she's like, she says, no, it was fun, but you know, that's just, just leave that there. He's like, okay, you know, his heart really breaks a little bit. So he does this again. Asks another girl out, sleeps with her on the first date. Again, he's like, I really like her, Jay Z. Like, I, I, you know, I want her to be my girlfriend. Want her to be my girlfriend. It's like, well, you know, you slept with her. I mean, you gotta just hold back a little, and you know, but you know, try talk to her. It's like, no, you know, it was fun, but I don't, you know, let's just leave it at that. Now he's gonna get really sad, right? I'm like, dude, just you know, refuse to sleep with her on the first date. Just refuse, okay? And then they do it on the second day or something, but hold back and then start going out with her. And that's what he did. And that's how he got his first non-Asian girlfriend. So absolutely, when you sleep with a girl on the first date, it can create buyer's remorse. A lot of, um, a lot of what happens within that scenario, buyer's remorse is when, um, for people that aren't familiar, is like when you, you know, maybe buy something and then you instantly you go, oh, what did I do that? Um, it comes from heightened emotions. You're, um, emotional level being raised really quickly where you're like, yep, this sounds like an awesome idea, I'm totally gonna do this. And then afterwards you're like, what did I do that for? Um, a lot of what happens between men and women in that sexual scenario is, uh, is that there's a lack of connection. Um, there's a lack of, of personality, personability um, between those two types of people. Um, and they don't have that kind of like, wow, that was really cool. You can, uh, I've had relationships where I've met, you know, I've met girls and instantly we've known we've been ready to be intimate with each other. Um, because of the connection that's been built. Whereas on the other hand, I've had you know slow, steamy seductions that have gone over three, four, five months, you know, before that, before both parties felt comfortable enough to, to be involved in that. So you do definitely have to play it by ear, but but understand that the end goal is connection, you know? And for, for a lot of guys when they're when they're young, when they're starting out dating and the whole sexual like world, um, they achieve their validation, or they achieve their end goal through having sex which is completely the opposite of women. So it, it really creates a conflict of interest, which is most of the time where we get the buyer's remorse from. When do you know when you hit that point where it's like, I shouldn't sleep with her until I hit this, you know? It, like, there's never a should, it could, it would have. It's, it's really like an individual case basis. And that just comes through social experience and calibration. You know, it's just like kind of, it's weird to say, but practice makes perfect. <laughs>